Hi, everybody. Ian Bremer here. It is late, and we have just seen uh, the first, maybe the last, presidential debate of 2024. Uh, I, I was skeptical about the strategy uh, from day one of Biden getting on stage uh, with Trump. Um, Biden uh, has never been a great campaigner, uh, doesn't have a lot of discipline, um, and isn't enormously entertaining. Uh, but they decided they needed to do it. Uh, and uh, the rules uh, benefited a normal politician. Uh, the, uh, the microphones uh, shut off except for the person that was allowed to speak, and there's no live audience, and it was CNN, so the questions are going to be, at the very least, uh, balance between the two. And if there's going to be a slant, it'll be towards Biden and not towards Trump. And despite all of that, Biden got absolutely pasted. Um, and it's not about his speaking points per se. There were some uh, points that he made. If you just look at the transcript uh, that uh, clearly were in his favor, I would say on balance on the economy, uh, his command of the facts was stronger. Uh, than that of Trump. Um, I saw that uh, in terms of talk of inflation and jobs. I saw that in terms of China and the trade deficit uh, with China that's actually narrowed as opposed to increased. Um, uh, certainly on abortion, I think that Biden would have landed more punches if you were only looking at the transcript. But no one is looking at the transcript. They're looking at the performance. And the performance, uh, Biden was abysmal. Uh, it wasn't just like a little bit on Trump's side. Trump looked vibrant. Uh, he actually uh, largely played by the rules. Um, he sounded strong. He stuck to his time limit. And Biden looked uh, and occasionally sounded incoherent. Uh, and and uh, the reality is that, I mean, Trump, in my view, shouldn't be running because he's unfit for being president. Biden shouldn't be running because he is too old to stand. Um, and and of the two challenges, uh, the latter looks a lot worse on a debate stage that 50 plus percent of Americans just watch. So the inbound that I've been receiving over the last two hours from people all over the world uh, is overwhelmingly, uh, is Biden now going to stand down? Um, what is going to happen, uh, because this is the worst evening, uh, certainly of his campaign, and the level of pressure to find someone, anyone else other than Biden to run, uh, is going to be strong. Um, they've been very careful with Biden over the past months. You know, he did a good job on the State of the Union speech, which was not facing live fire from an opposition uh, candidate. It was a set piece that he could prepare for and do exactly the way he prepared for. But other than that, he's been very careful, very cautious in the way he's been available public. And, and, and even then, um, there have been a lot of uh, difficulties where an 81 year old is showing his age. Um, tonight, that sort of fell apart for him. There is no plan B, at least not as of this evening. There's no one else that is being prepared to stand instead of Biden. There is no secret committee that is saying, we need you, uh, Gina Raimondo, we need you, Gretchen Whitmer, we need you, Gavin Newsom. That is, that is not where the party is. Biden has been strongly intent on running, and there is a vice president who is quite unpopular, but that would be the ostensible um, a candidate if Biden were suddenly to step down, uh, Kamala Harris, who no one believes could actually win against Trump. Um, this was, of course, um, a, an embarrassing evening in the sense that um, the actual number of lies that Trump was uh, offering on stage on all sorts of topics uh, from January 6th um, to um, the, uh, the, 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 the convictions and the sex with the porn star, um, and uh, you know issues on 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 the economy, and and a number of others. 
uh, were uh, overwhelming, but the ability to fact check Trump in this format is zero. It'll be done now, of course, by all sorts of media outlets tomorrow, and it'll be entirely too late. But there's no way that CNN is going to be capable of doing that. There's no way that Biden is capable of doing that. He's not able to land punches um, at anywhere near the speed or defend himself at the speed um, that that Trump is able uh, to to throw down, and and that is the issue. Ultimately, I mean, Trump may not be a great president. In my view, he certainly is not. Um, but he is one of the most effective campaigners, marketers, performers in American history. And a U.S. election that takes two years to conduct with billions of dollars and is all about the media and social media um, plays to Trump's advantage. And that is particularly true uh, given the disparity in the capabilities, the physical capabilities, the mental capabilities of these two men today. So, again, this was a big loss for Biden. And I think the pressure uh, on the Democrats to stand someone else's high the likelihood that Trump wins, of course, goes up. Uh, number one, if Biden stays in, which is my presumption going forward, and if he doesn't, you're replacing him with someone who is completely unknown and untested with a short amount of time to change that reality. Um, and, uh, and Trump just keeps on keeping on. So uh, I, I think this is a very serious challenge uh, for the United States. Um, I, I think that, it, you know, no, anyone uh, but the most serious partisans um, would say that there's no way that Biden would be able to capably run the country for another four years. And that should be your baseline uh, for standing for the presidency. Of course, um, there's also, in my view, uh, no way that Trump uh, should stand for president, period, given the fact that he doesn't accept a free and fair uh, transition of power, which is kind of fundamental to what a democracy is all about. But that is not the way um, Trump is perceived by a large number of Americans. And that, of course, makes the system more vulnerable, uh, makes democracy weaker. So not a good evening. Uh, for democracy. I will say one of the things, just to talk about substance here for a moment, um, the, the fact that Trump continues to talk about uh, America as in decline and no one admires America and America is a horrible country and it's falling apart um, if Biden wins again, uh, that's the single most disturbing thing that I continue to hear back from Trump's old inauguration speech to the way he runs, um, which is if it's not him, tear it all down. And that is, of course, the antithesis of what a president should be. A president should stand for the entire country. He should stand for all the people. Trump doesn't do that. He stands for himself and he stands for the people that supports him and nobody else. Um, and, and that really does undermine the United States. The U.S. today is still the most powerful country in the world by far. And a lot of people around the world want to come to the United States. That's why there's a migration issue that Biden is not doing so well on. People around the world want their kids to be educated in the United States, no matter what you think about the state of elite universities today and all of the wokeism. Uh, they want to own real estate in the U.S. They want to be exposed to the U.S. markets. They want to have the dollar. What they don't admire is America's political system. They don't admire America's institutions. Uh, and they certainly don't admire the way that this debate was conducted today and the two people that are standing for the presidency for 2024. I don't admire that either. It embarrasses me. Uh, we should be able to do better. A country as strong as America, with the power of America, should be able to run a much more effective campaign with people that we admire that no matter who wins, that you can say, this is my president and I'm glad that we have someone of this capacity that is running for the presidency and is leading the country. We are not remotely close to that looking ahead to 2025. And, and that pains me. And I, I wish I could say otherwise to you this evening, but I can't. So that's where we are. And uh, I'll continue to focus on this and share my thoughts with you as honestly as I can going forward. But as of this evening, U.S. democracy is not in a great place. That's it for me, and I'll talk to you all real soon.